The Russian military command has likely ordered Russian forces to conduct a relatively high tempo of mechanized assaults in Ukraine to pursue significant tactical advances before muddy ground conditions in fall 2024 constrain mechanized maneuver. Poor weather conditions in fall 2024 and early winter 2024 to 2025 will likely complicate and constrain both mechanized and infantry maneuver, but Russian forces may seek to maintain their consistent offensive pressure in eastern Ukraine despite these difficulties. The Institute for the Study of War said this. Ukrainian National Guard spokesperson Ruslan Muzichuk stated that Russian forces are increasing their use of armored vehicles on the battlefield specifically in the Kharkiv and Pokrovsk directions in order to take advantage of dry road and terrain conditions before rainy seasonal weather causes muddy grounds conditions. Russian forces have been conducting a high tempo of mechanized assaults in western Donetsk Oblast since late July 2024 and have conducted at least four observed battalion-sized mechanized assaults in eastern Ukraine since July 25, 2024. Russian forces have also resumed relatively large mechanized assaults along the kupiansk svatov kremina line since late September 2024. The Russian military command likely aims for intensified mechanized offensive activity to allow Russian forces to advance across open fields and consolidate in nearby frontline settlements that Russian forces can then use as a foothold for staging and launching offensive operations that seek to achieve operational objectives such as the seizure of Kurakov in western Donetsk Oblast or the seizure of Pokrovsk. A Russian mill blogger claimed 9 that muddy seasonal conditions have already started in Kursk Oblast and are constraining maneuver for wheeled vehicles. Fall weather conditions will also likely constrain Russian infantry maneuver, and the Russian military command likely hopes that mechanized advances that Russian forces can achieve now will limit the number of open fields that Russian infantry will have to cross after weather conditions deteriorate. Russian forces have relied on small infantry groups to advance under the concealment of windbreaks in open fields from settlement to settlement, particularly in the Pokrovsk direction. Fall weather will cause many windbreaks comprised of deciduous trees to lose most of their foliage and will provide less concealment for Russian infantry groups during fall 2024 and winter 2024 to 2025 leaving Russian infantrymen more vulnerable to pervasive Ukrainian drone reconnaissance and tactical fires. Russian forces will likely not cease offensive operations following the fall mud season, though adverse weather conditions will likely degrade Russian infantry effectiveness. Russian forces made a concerted effort to regain the theater-wide initiative during the period of the most difficult weather conditions for mechanized offensive operations in fall 2023, however, and may seek to retain the theater-wide initiative though consistent offensive pressure in fall 2024 under similar weather conditions. Russian President Vladimir Putin and the Russian military command are pursuing a strategy that aims to prevent Ukraine from accumulating manpower and material to contest the theater-wide initiative by maintaining consistent offensive pressure on Ukrainian forces throughout the front line and will likely continue to pursue this strategy despite seasonal constraints on mechanized and infantry maneuver. Russian forces have exhausted many of the reserves that they established for their intensified summer 2024 offensive operation that has heavily focused on advancing in Donetsk Oblast, and ISW continues to assess that the ongoing Russian offensive operation will likely culminate within the coming months. Poor weather conditions that constrain battlefield maneuver will likely contribute to culmination, but the culmination of the Russian summer 2024 offensive operation will not necessarily result in a complete end of consistent Russian offensive operations throughout eastern Ukraine in fall 2024 and early winter 2024 to 2025. Russian forces have an established pattern of fighting beyond their culmination points as well as fighting through adverse weather conditions. The elite 47th mechanized brigade of the Ukrainian armed forces, which spent 15 months continuously fighting in many of the bloodiest battles with the Russians in the east and went into a well-deserved rest and recharge in early September, may have the most sophisticated American Abrams tanks. 
The unit's lone tank battalion was equipped with the American-made M1A1 Situational Awareness Abrams from the 2000s, which are not the most protected, but the Ukrainian vehicles may be the most modified, Forbes writes, citing a video in which the 47th Brigade showed off surviving vehicles during exercises, the 69-ton four-seater M1s sport American-made reactive armor blocks on their sides and Ukrainian-made reactive armor blocks on their turrets as locally made slat armor against drone and drone grounding jammers. Journalists noted that the improvements are designed to combat two main threats, anti-tank missiles and explosive drones. Reactive armor explodes outward, deflecting missile warheads. Cellular armor and a suppressor disable and block explosive drones. The article emphasizes, it is not known how many Abrams tanks the 47th Brigade had left after the fighting. At most, the 47th Mechanized Brigade has 25 M1s left. At a minimum, it might have just 17, but it's a safe bet all the survivors now have the add-on armor and jammers. They'll roll back into battle better protected than ever, potentially delaying the day when the brigade has too few tanks to form a cohesive fighting force. If the 47th Mechanized Brigade gets more Abrams, they might not come from the United States, but from Australia. While the Americans haven't signaled a willingness to transfer more tanks, the Australians are reportedly considering donating 59 surplus M1A1SAs that recently retired from the Australian Army. With 59 fresh Abrams, the 47th Mechanized could replenish its existing tank battalion and possibly form a second battalion too. Unless and until that happens, those 14 to 25 survivors of the original 31 Ukrainian M1s will have to soldier on alone, Forbes said. According to Oryx analysts, six such tanks were destroyed and eight were damaged or abandoned. It is strange that the United States has not sent an M1 replacement. Those first 31 Abrams that arrived in Ukraine a year ago are the only Abrams that the Americans have promised, despite the fact that there are literally thousands of tanks in storage in the United States, the article says.